Hey, what's up, guys? Chad here with the Reptile Rangers. Now, we're at the Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center again today and store. And we're actually going to talk about a beautiful, not nasty tempered, but beautiful venomous snake today. Now, just before we get into that, right in that bottom corner, way down there, is our subscriber button. Make sure you hit that. And if you already have, we appreciate you doing so and following along week after week, video after video. Now, let's get right into this. All right, so one of the most amazing to me venomous snakes on the planet is the Gaboon Viper. The Gaboon Viper is one of the most beautifully colored snakes on the planet. Now, there are some that are more brightly colored, absolutely. But when it comes to girth, when it comes to size, when it comes to color, it, these are just some of the most amazing, amazing animals. I'm going to pull one out here and we're going to set it on the table. I'm actually going to go from kind of from start to finish. And, uh, and not in necessarily just to show how to work a venomous snake, something like that, because yes, there's a lot of moron on YouTube that uh, do a lot of very stupid handling for view. It's for their own personal clout. It certainly ain't for education. Hence why they've been nailed so many times, and a lot of them are lucky they're still alive. But anyways, that does nothing for the education of the animals, nor for the conservation of the animals, nor for the reptile hobby in and of itself. Just making people look bad or stupid. The Gaboon Viper right here is an absolutely, absolutely amazing, amazing snake. Uh, they are a type of viper from Africa. And they are one of the largest bodied vipers on the planet. The heaviest bodied viper on the planet. And one of the biggest. All right. Now, this big, beautiful girl right here is one of my producing females. And she's got a lot of heavy pink in her. So we're going to set her down here nice and gently. And you see what I did right there? That's called double hooking. Now, yes, you can do a hook and tail, but also you need to understand something that a Gaboon Viper can actually reach all the way back to its tail and bite something. Gaboon Vipers have the longest fangs of any normal snake on the planet. Their fangs can be over two inches long. So holding them by the head a lot of the times in a pinning fashion, their fangs can actually go through their lower jaw. Now, what you hear right here, this girl right here, is doing a telltale huff and puffing, just as a warning, saying I'm here, I'm irritated, leave me alone. Some of the most amazing things about the Gaboon Viper is in the way in which they act and the things that they can do. And I'll bring you up closer here in a minute, and we'll talk a little bit about some of the up-close features of the Gaboon Viper. But the Gaboon Viper is an amazing animal in, in the sense that, for one, it can actually take a full-grown rabbit and hold it off the ground while it's dying until it dies. They have an immense amount of strength. Now, the Gaboon Vipers are a very, very tolerant snake. These guys will tolerate a lot of harassment before they swing most of the time. Now, not all the time, but most of the time. The Gaboon Vipers, as I said, you can see right here, and I'll show you this again here in a minute, these big old venom sacks, and they have long, just incredibly long fangs. Now, in Africa, in a lot of cases, because they are so heavy body, they can't exactly just chase their prey down. So what they do is they sit motionless for days and days and days and days on end. In some cases, they'll actually sit so long, they'll kill the grass in the spot that they were sitting in. Now, the Gaboon Viper can get up to 15, 16, 18, 20, 25 pound of snake. Okay, A lot of their body mass actually comes from retaining fecal. Now... <laughs> That's basically one big giant turd, okay? That's it were. With that being said, as a snake keeper, no snake keeper wants to clean up crap, but when the venomous snakes, especially like the Gaboon Viper, has a bowel movement, it's one massive pile. So they hold it for an extended period of time and have one massive pile. Now, that's fun for us snake keepers because, no, it's not very often we want to go dookie diving, as we call it, but in this case, we can actually find fangs. So things that we give away to customers, maybe to kids on a, on a birthday, or in some cases we sell them for, you know, for whatever, and so does other facilities. But in a lot of cases, we just give them away. But one of the cool things about diving through their crap is being able to find their shed fangs. Now, as we're talking about the Gaboon Viper, right here in the front, the horns right there off the front of the snake, you can actually see where they get the name Rhinoceros Viper. Now, also, Right over the top, a lot of people talk about a hourglass pattern on the copperhead. And there is a type of hourglass, absolutely. 
You can absolutely see an hourglass pattern if you know what you're looking for on a copperhead. But if you take a look right here, right there is a perfect hourglass pattern. There's one. There's one. There's one. And you can see the amazing pinks and grays and browns and olive greens and different colors that this girl has. Right there. Big old venom sacks on that pinkish, sandy colored head. Now, this is a female. And females will have these short little stumpy tails. Males would have a tail that get real skinny and go a little bit longer out. It's one way to be able to tell male from female in the gaboon viper and several other species of venomous snakes without actually having to do any kind of probing or popping, putting the keeper or handler at risk. These guys are some of the most beautifully colored snakes on the planet, but with their beautiful color, one of the most amazing things about these snakes is they can actually blend in to their natural environment. Big, beautiful girl. Now, with these beautiful, amazing animals, they are a live birther, and they can have a lot of babies. She's produced on, for us on a couple of occasions. And she's produced a heavy, heavy, amount of young. These animals are what's known as kill scale, meaning they have very rough feeling scales. Some snakes are very smooth and some are very rough. You can see the rough texture and you've seen that when we were up close with her. You can see the rough texture of the scaling. So it's a little bit more coarse instead of think of ball python smooth, rat snake smooth, corn snake smooth. They're not smooth like that. They're more of a coarse texture. Now the gaboon viper has a subspecies called the actual rhino viper. And those come in some of the most colorful of, I'll put up a picture right here, of the Uturi Forest Rhinoceros Viper. And they're some of the absolute most beautiful snakes on the planet. Now, there are a mixture called a hybridized or hybrid or hybridization of the Gaboon and the Rhino Viper becomes the Gabino. The Rhino Viper is a little bit more difficult to keep. They're a little bit stressier. They die, tend, tend to perish or die a little bit easier for just many different reasons. And they also don't have the size that the gaboons have, but they have the color. So by taking and mixing the gaboon with the rhino viper, you get kind of the best of both worlds. You can take and put the colors to the gaboon, but you put the size to the rhino and the hardiness of life. One of the things that we tend to see more here in science is for some reason, females tend to be hardier than males. We see them lasting longer. One of the things that we've also noticed, us especially, and we've, we've worked with this for several years, and I know a couple of other places that have done the exact same thing, but one of the things that we have noticed is when it comes to something like snake mites, snake mites don't tend to affect or go to some of these venomous snakes, certain species of venomous snakes, like they would non-venomous. Let's say boas and balls and corn snakes and some of your colubrid species and some of your constrictor species, retics and berms as well. The mites that affect them, we don't necessarily see them trying to go over to a lot of your venomous snakes, which in some cases, that's a really good thing. There may be cases and somebody may go, oh, yep, yep, I've seen snake mites, you know, on my gaboon or on my western diamondback or on my copperhead or whatever the case may be. You know, same thing. We just over our many decades of doing this have never once seen it. We've even tested this in some areas and they just will not go over to these animals from some of your non-venomous species. But this right here is probably to me one of the most amazing animals. Anybody that knows me knows that I'm absolutely in love with cobras. I absolutely love cobras, our king, our monocles, our spitting cobras, our Egyptians, forests, uh, snouted, just all the different many species of cobras. I love cobras. But this right here is absolutely hands down one of my favorite species, not only to work with, but just to learn about and to watch. They're such a gentle by nature giant, even though they're super deadly, as it were, they have what's called a cytoxic venom, meaning it has a necrotic effect. There will be excessive amounts of bleeding and things like that, but it's also tissue and muscle deadener. 
So it does more necrosing than about anything else. And so with that, these guys are a deadly species. They are a very dangerous species. And when they pump in venom, they're going to pump in a lot. But by and large, they're a very, very tolerant, very tolerant snake, generally speaking. Yeah, this is a good girl. Now, I hope you've enjoyed this short video about the Gaboon Viper. We do appreciate you coming along and following along week after week after week. Make sure to write in. Let us know of other things that you want us to film about. Feel free to get with us in the description below. All of our information will be down there. If you have questions, if you need anything, if you need help, we do have, of course, the full zoo, the full storefront. So you come by and see us anytime if there's anything that you need. Make sure to check us out on TikTok at Reptile Rangers, Instagram, Kernersville Reptile Zoo, the Facebook page, Kernersville Reptile Zoo. Also, we have the website up and running now, which is Kernersville Reptile Zoo and Pet Store. And again, we do appreciate you coming along and following along week after week after week. There we go for this big, beautiful girl right here. This wonderful, amazing animal right there. Absolutely gorgeous girl. Now, I am Chad. We are the Reptile Rangers here at the Kernelsville Reptile Zoo and Medical Center. We'll either see you at the zoo or we'll see you on the next episode. Later.